it's just conjugated encyclopedia but uh -huh. but but i think from what i see the kiswahili version mm -hmm. you know there, there's no special name other than the i can't tell it but yes <laughs> it's so um, I'll, I'll give you for those people who gave us your feedback yesterday on our social media our digital team posted that question and i will read you give you the the, um, the results and feedback from kenyans what they know about <laughs> encyclopedia and basically that i will tell you later on but right about now how do you call calculator in kiswahili this week is world kiswahili day okay so what wajana i'll be coming back later on and tell give you the re, the comments people sent um as far as that is concerned okay c coming back to the daily nation why cut throughout rutos 50 cas why cut throughout rutos 50 cas so th there is a complete and this needs to be so heavy um there is a complete ruling there it's second times in second times positions dished out mostly to poor losers have been nullified and perhaps this was the argument of a, from a majority of kenyans that it was a reward to loyalists or to reward people who supported president william mm -hmm. ruto mm -hmm. but could not make it to the cabinet mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, there, there are a couple of things around the appointments. Remember that, you know, the president also wanted to find political stability and to create a scenario that his government is united. So he needed to, to get people who can bring the nationalistic clout and also bring political capital. And most of the guys who could bring that political capital are those who are poor losers. Mm. So that will then appeal to some of the, the constituents who are from uh, the areas that were perceived not to be UDA. Yeah. So, uh, well, in, in his wisdom, it was, it was important for him to take those poor losers to help him increase his political capital in those appointments. Mm. Yeah. No room to maneuver right now, do we have? I as think, far as that ruling is concerned, I think I think the thing is that they would they, maybe the government could try to appeal uh, that 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 ruling, mm -hmm. but then they also might need to look at the public mood. You know, it, it's an opportunity maybe for the president to also look at the public mood and yes. see. I mean, do are people really for having 50 CSS considering mm -hmm. the high cost of living and things like that? And this is an opportunity for him to say that you know what the po the courts have pronounced themselves on this issue, and I might hands are tied off so in as much as you're my friends I needed to to reward you or I needed to help you guys mm -hmm. get positions my hands are tied based on the the legalities that have been pronounced by the by, by, the, by the court so yeah. the, the, the president can use this opportunity to clean himself the mess and play to the public mm -hmm. uh, mood and and using it to tell his cronies that I cannot do it yeah so okay. by that he will be playing the public mood and at the same time he will be appealing to those who were appointed you know i'm i'm rejecting you positively mm. yeah Th there's a big question here so yeah. what next i mean to the 50 cas um the, f the 50 individuals were supposed to resume the positions of cas remember they had been sworn in mm. but the court said hold um, so what next um, uh, for the president? President William Ruto suffered a big blow. That's according to the Daily Nation. <coughs> president William Ruto suffered a big blow yesterday after the High Court declared his move to appoint 50 chief administrative secretaries as unconstitutional. Will he obey the law or, like his predecessor, Uhuru Kenyatta, just ignore it? That is a big question here on page 7 of the Daily Nation. But this is what the judges said. In our considered view that it was not intention of the framers, the framers of the constitution to create positions of 50 CAS to dispute 22 cabinet secretaries. And according to the newly created office of the fresh complemented of 50 had to comply with the constitution and the criteria set out earlier in Okeum Tata case in order to be lawfully established, they did not comply. For the avoidance of doubt, the entire complement of 50 CAS is therefore unconstitutional. Um, the predecessor, Uhuru Kenyatta, had these gentlemen and ladies in his cabinet. This is coming back to haunt President William Ruto. What does this really show? A complete disregard of the law?
I think I think the the courts had an issue with the procedure mm. uh, upon which the new the, the, the additional 27 were added because in their considered opinion they th they think that there was more public participation in the creation of the 23 constituencies mm. I mean the 23 CSS yes. in the previous regime and it was also consistent with the number of ministries that were, that were there at that time mm. but then they did not find justification and proper consultation into the creation of the additional 27 who are then to act as assistants to the existing ministries which are far lesser so i think for them the the you know they were trying to see where does the constitution bring in has having 20 50 CSS when we when we when the constitution says that we should have a maximum of 20 is it 23 or 24 ministries and a minimum of 14 so mm. so i think i think for them the issue was the additional there was no justification for the additional 27 and and in addition to that the you know being that the the, tw the 27 they considered them unconstitutional then there's no way they could say that 23 are constitutional 27 is unconstitutional yeah, the that, question that's the biggest be, question where uh, isaac maura was raising in court yesterday the, the question will be which one among the 23 will and which one among the 27 will not mm. so if the if the 27 that were the additional 27 that were created were unconstitutional then go back to the drawing board and find how we can make a con a 23 that is consistent with the, the one that we had in the previous regime but you see the court said that the entire office of the cas is unconstitutional so it completely <coughs> scraps off yeah. that office in its entirety yeah so maybe they could uh, i mean the president still can be able to look on other legal ways of mm. creating other additional maybe positions because he has a, the executive authority and the legal framework that yeah. he, you know you know the majority in parliament that you know can help him to create other positions in government to help him to because the the idea is you have people who can help you bring political capital you have these people who are uh, you know who are losers who need jobs how do you create jobs for them yeah it's up to him as the head yeah. of the executive okay yeah. okay very quickly um on the front page of um still on the front page of the daily nation good bad and ugly of 2022 health survey again which was released yesterday by the kenyan uh, national bureau of statistics the good the bad and ugly on that survey edible oil farms fault move to reduce tariffs on imports and finally public sector wage bill hits new record as civil service pay rises staff to get raise this july all right so the question of um uh more kenyan women than men condone wife beaten that is one of the um the question here that you'd rather stay in a chaotic relationship um than leave so that's why more kenyan women than men condone wife beating so it's it's um Mm. A shocking revelation there, which yeah. was done by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. Okay, what is on the front page of the Star newspaper? Judicial hurdle, court blocks Ruto's CASs. Judicial hurdle, Ruto, court blocks Ruto's CASs, declares the 50 positions unconstitutional days after suspending tax laws. This must be a very big blow to the House on the Hill. Churchill. Yes, it's still, um, it's still because now they really have now to think through. How will they deal with those poor losers? Mm. And you know, we are also looking at scenarios where the opposition is also building its momentum. The president needs to consolidate his government and his, his, his political support. So mm. he really has got to think through carefully how he will deal with this. And I, I, I also think that it is an opportunity for him to take stock of the impact of what those some of these CSS would have given him in terms of building his his his, his, his political mm -hmm. uh, strength yes because you know you you know he may have done it at a time when the the, the position was already rallying a lot of support especially in the zones that he did not have uh, he did not have support it's, it will be incumbent for him and his advisors to take stock and ask themselves, you know, if I had uh, appointed Victor at that time, I may be, have thought that I'm going to get more political base from yeah. where he comes from. Mm -hmm. Is that really the case now? And if it is not so, how can I, how can I, what can I do 
uh, differently constitutionally to to stabilize myself politically maybe it could be time maybe to to think of extending a, a hand now to the opposition in a much more deliberate and a much more intentional way mm -hmm. and have them you know just have them uh, talk you know you know the people don't want to talk about handshakes but you know sometimes in in leading democracies yeah. it calls on leaders to shelve off all their all their enmity and all mm. their differences for the sake of the stability of the country. Yeah. If 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 getting 50 CSs would have helped him to stabilize the country, and it is unconstitutional, why don't you do a constitutional thing of mm. extending a hand to those who are opposing you, and work with them to stabilize the nation? Okay. There's a question I wanted to ask you, and a majority of Kenyans, including some of the legal minds, have raised here um, some political co commentators or even um, stalwarts saying that uh, it, it was uh, a well calculated move. That you, you cannot also not. Uh, it was a well calculated <laughs> move. I mean, um, if you know what I'm talking about. You, you also cannot. You also cannot. Um, you, you, you cannot wish away that mm -hmm. because usually the corridors of power and in the house of cards there are a lot of things that happen on the background yes you might realize that could be there is still a hand of you know the two contending parties in all this mm. you know you may have done this but you know like for example this is just a hypothetical theoretical scenario mm -hmm. that there could be certain conversations going on between the, the 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 regime in place and the opposition parties that we are not privy to in public and one of the conditions behind the scenes is that you know what share of all these people because remember when you look at some of the people who are appointed in the in the CSS they are people who are against the the work they actually will not be for yeah. a handshake between mm -hmm. between the government of the day and the opposition yes so if a handshake was to happen mm -hmm. the first people who will ensure it is rejected and it does not happen are the people who are elected in the, who are selected as css yeah so that's just a hypothetical scenario but we cannot wish it away. I'll, I'll get into that i'll get into that because this um <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of questions surrounding that. Um, mm -hmm. Having in mind that the formation of the government is more or less yeah. over and things are now moving. Okay, um, that is that. So there's another question here of, um, as per the Kenyan National Bureau of Tast Statistics, the surveys show that majority marriages are come we stay. That is, is according to the report. Where marriages are registered, number one, in Garissa, 34%, Lamu, 33%, Mombasa, 30%, that is highest. Um, Isiolo, 29%, Kericho, 29%, lowest. Marsabit, 3%, Mandera, 5%, Samburu, 6%, Wajia, 7%, Nyamira, 7%, Tana River, um, 7%. I'm happy that my county does not feature anywhere. So. Um, I don't know where we, be, where we belong. <laughs> I, I don't know where we belong, and that is as, that, as far as that is concerned. I asked, um, majority of marriages are come we stay according to the survey, and that is a very worrying stand because everything has to be legalized. Mm -hmm. um, under the law, it has to be legalized. Um, that is on the, the front page of the star. So a list of chief administrative uh, secretaries, people who are supposed to take up their positions, it's completely fleshed out there for you from number one to the last number of um, uh, number 50, we have them. So you can also take a look at that paper for your own consumption for you to get what it means. Court strikes at heart of Ruto's key plans. But was it? And finally, on the front page of uh, the standard newspaper cas judges deal ruto body blow judges deal ruto body blow president william ruto is between a rock and a hard place on what he will use to reward his cronies after the courts found the chief administrative secretary position unconstitutional the move will save taxpayers 187 million shillings in salaries over the four years they would have served that is the story on the front page here of the daily of uh, the standard newspaper still on the front page raila protest will not end until we see good results friday sabasaba day he said is going to be 
uh, day for him to call Kenyans to the streets. And finally, the truck driver that rammed into people in Londiani finally spoke. Uh, gentleman Gilbert Ntuyemungu, who is a Rwandese, is actually recovering in an Akuru hospital, says that his vehicle lost control and caused him to ram into other motorists and roadside traders. According to the driver, he had actually stayed and um, let me get to that story he was he was at uh, the simba cement that is in akuru for two days waiting to be loaded with cement to transport to uganda via busia road and the bricks failed that's what happened mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. that's what happened yeah. so the randy said that um it's only that the bricks failed that's what really happened mm -hmm. um we can only condole with the families of the affected people so in that region. Yeah. All right. Let's take a break. When we come back, we are going to dig deeper into a discussion here on people and politics with Churchill Saoke. But I still ask, how do we call calculator in Kiswahili? Friday is Kiswahili Day, which will be celebrated in the country. How do you call calculator? How good is your Kiswahili? Welcome back. Now let's dive into a discussion today. Let's look at, let, want us to discuss what really happened in the courts yesterday and what it pertains to the Kenya Kwanzaa administration. What are some of the cards that the president still has under the table and what are the moves that he will make moving forward? So the case is closed as of now, Churchill. And now the only thing, according to the <coughs> affected gentleman, let me quote what um, Isaac Moura said. They are going to appeal the decision which is still under the law, which is fine. But do you think the courts will, the Court of Appeal will overrule what the High Court has said, being that the positions are unconstitutional? It's, it's still possible the courts could be able to uh, overrule it because, you know, the Court of Appeal also will have their own opinion on based on, based on the issue. But then also they might decide to do, um, you know, what we call the wisdom of the court. And, and in doing the wisdom of the court, they might try to create a scenario where they, they, they bring a ruling where the, those positions could be regularized as per the constitution and you know do, do not expect and this now depends on how mm. maybe the the executive uh, defends itself and and presents its case if they really want these positions then they could present it in such a manner that the the the, the court of appeal rules not in in concurrence with the the high court mm. but sort of to create a win-win scenario where you know you're saying that well you need the CSS yes but then should they be this much so yes. that is regularizing and we've seen those kind of scenarios happening before mm. in 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 courts when they when when appeals have been done yeah, yeah. much as that has been done with um, Parliament cannot do anything about it because once it's unconstitutional creating a constitutional office would mean it has to go through a referendum if possible mm -hmm. or they would bypass it through parliamentary positions mm -hmm. parliamentary processes mm -hmm. but uh, based on that and the mood of the country uh, mood of the country do you think that is the right path the president would want to take I think I think as we had said before it is it is this this is an opportunity for maybe the president to look at the mood of the public and yes. ask himself that you know well i want to reward these these losers or these people who are key political heavyweights in different parts of the country and at the same time the public mood is not really for them how how best can we go mm. or how best do we present this case to an extent that it, it it's it's also a win-win position for both the public uh, politically and also the heavyweights who need to get these positions and you know one of the things maybe that 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 could be that that could be looked at are you know issues around you know when you look at how even president uhuru kenyatta created these positions mm -hmm. It was through an executive authority that he had, uh, you know, that, 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 and then he had some sort of legal backing around it. You know, what actually 
made this what actually created a, a problem for these 50 years is, is the fact that it was overinflated yeah and there was no justification for that 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 overinflation so in my in my opinion i think that the uh, the government still has an opportunity to defend itself through an appeal for a regularization mm -hmm. for it to be taken back to the 23 Okay. For me, I think that is the that 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 could be an opportunity that they could because in as much as the High Court declared them illegal, mm -hmm. the, the 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 Court of Appeal can still be able to negate that, and still find a win-win situation mm -hmm. for both the government and also the the petitioners, and in that way, the moment you reduce the CSS from fifty. To a level that they are equal to the the CSS, I mean to the CSS, I mean the cabinet secretaries, mm. then the public mood on an inflated cabinet will now not be there. Mm -hmm. So politically, the the president will be winning because people will not be seeing that you know you are inflating the what, you are inflating the the budget, yeah. you are inflating yeah. the, the 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 salaries by having so many CSS that are not needed. Mm. So the moment you have. X, minister, X ministers and you have X assistant ministers, same number, mm -hmm. or the assistant ministers are slightly lower, there is justification for but that. Still so it's, the it's, question it's, will it's be It's going regular, to be a right? very uh, tricky balancing act because remember what the court said, yeah. having a cabin, a, 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 um, CS mm -hmm. in between the PS and the, and the CS, that would mean that the cabinet, the CS will be more superior to the PS. Yeah. Um, so who do we have? the PS reporting to the CAS and the CAS reporting to the P to the, to the CS. So I, I think th those are very important observations that yeah. actually... As for the job description. Exactly. Those are important observations that actually the, the government can actually use to regularize the process. Mm. Because, you know, the moment the loopholes have already been brought out, it's upon the defenders and upon the people who are going to appeal to raise, to look at some of the issues that have been brought out and try to do, clarify, and if need be, mm. if there are anything that needs to, needs to be legalized or need to go through parliament, they do it before even... The, the you know or in the process of of, of, of doing some of this appeal mm. so in, in my in my in my opinion I, I think that the the government as they do some of the you know the people who have been affected as they do their appeal they need to look beyond just getting their positions back yeah but regularizing the process to fit the constitution as has been put within the threshold mm -hmm. of the of the of the world of the of the of the high court just the same way you saw what happened to the bbi you saw there was a lot of you know the 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 dent into the process of the whole process yes to an extent that anybody who wants to do a constitutional change will have to go back to that ruling and see mm. are we following the due process that is exactly what this team needs to look at they need to look at that ruling see what the courts raised the loopholes and work on those loopholes that is what we call constitutional regularization absolutely yeah. when you look at the old constitution we had cabinet secretaries and assistant cabinet secretaries yeah um that was in the old um uh, in the old constitution but then yeah. now we have got cabinet secretaries yeah. and now we have got permanent secretaries but do we still need chief administrative secretaries if the ps and the cs mm. can still run a ministry mm. pretty well i mean they have all yeah. everybody behind yeah. them yeah. to help them run ministries yeah. so should we have three offices under one ministry so technically no and uh constitutionally no, because the constitution only recognizes mm. the, 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 the cabinet secretary and the principal secretary. Politically, yes, because the president is, the presidency rules in a political environment. And is, it is always in his wisdom to create positions mm. that will help him to stabilize himself politically. So one of politically. Those, politically. So politically, okay. it is very important for him. Because, you know, if you find, for example, there are people who in this country, in any given part of this country, who think that maybe we have not been given enough 
cabinet secretaries mm -hmm. we have not been given enough principal secretaries then you'll say okay let us give you a cabinet a cabinet uh, mm -hmm. chief administrative secretary so in your in your imagination and you know many people do not understand the constitution mm -hmm. you know in their imagination they will think that they're part and parcel of what you know at least we do not have a cs we yes. do not have a ps but we have a cas mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. but in real sense the cs and the ps are the constitutionally recognized officers yes. of, a, of a ministry yes that is that is information that many people who <laughs> who this appointment of the of the cs is are appealing to do not know mm. so politically the appointment of the css makes a lot of sense constitutionally not constitutionally not technically not it's going to be a, a very a, a, i mean a balancing act and the reason why i asked you a question churchill was that um many people are saying that it was a well calculated move because the president needed time yeah. to form his government mm. to make it intact and let it move looking at the number of months that this case has taken four months it was enough for the president to form his government and zip it up so what's now left for the 50 gentlemen and ladies because as we speak who is going to fit in which position parastatals are fully uh, packed if you look at other government offices the bodies the, i mean look name it so who is going to fit where while and looking at the mood on the ground currently well that well that may have been a possibility i i really still have doubts hmm. Oh, uh, looking at who the president is and how he has remained loyal to his, um, to those who supported him. When you look at some of the people who have been, who were appointed CASs, mm -hmm. there were people who were really supported the president from, you know, from way before even UDA or Kenya Kwanzaa started. Mm -hmm. And it, I, I think that in, in, when I look at how he has, how he has rewarded his loyalists, I, I do not think that he would calculate, he, he would do that level of calculation to some of the loyalists who he appointed in uh, as CSS. You mm -hmm. know, like you look at people like uh, Millicent Omanga, you know, these are people who stood with, hi stood with him from way before when he was just starting, when he was fighting, when he was, when, you know, when he, when, when he had a host, when he was in a hostile cabinet, you know. And, and, and I don't think that he would do that level of calculation for those vo those loyalists considering how he has rewarded uh, he has honestly rewarded his loyalist in this regime so mm. that is 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 a thing that i will give i will give at 20 or 15 percent do you think this is a big test to the president if yes why and how if no yes and how two court cases in a span of a week yeah uh, the finance bill and now this one it's 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 a big test it's a big test for him and uh, you know it it now depends on how he's going to do his um, on how he's going to uh, to manage this this these legal battles because mm. there are legal battles that will dent into his uh, into his uh, into his political strength and to it there are also legal battles that will also dent into in the implementation of his uh, his annual plan so this year remember that uh, the implementation of the finance bill is key uh -huh. for for his agenda this year and so if there is any derailment in any aspect then some of the programs or some of the projects that he would want to do will be will be hindered or will be delayed so it's it will now be up to him to be more efficient and you know the uh, jb muturi has got his uh, has got his work cut out to ensure that you know he defends the president as much as possible to in these two in in these two legal battles but i think also it's a test on him as you had uh, as you had mentioned that you know if this was a well calculated move it is also a test on him to to see whether he really uh, wanted to reward some of these people yeah if he really wanted to reward them then it is a chance for him to think of how do I do it? How do you do it? Because going against the court, the, the court process yeah. and the court decision would also tantamount to uh, disobeying the court orders. I mean, look at it this way. Let me quote what uh, um, Justice Heading Ongodi said. Was there public participation in regard to the appointment of the extra 
27 CAS, there was no public participation in the appointment of the extra 27 CAS. The establishment of the extra CAS positions was unconstitutional. So, public participation, what should it entail in as far as this is concerned? <coughs> I, I, I think that there is um, there was there would have been need for a more comprehensive engagement with the public to determine the necessity of having a CAS, a CAS to an extent that even the members of parliament are well engaged. Remember mm. that by by you know when 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 the president took the names of these CSS to the par to parliament, parliament said, you know, they washed their hands and said that they cannot vet these people because these people are not what? They are not constitutional officers. So, mm -hmm. so in, in, I think that the, uh, the courts maybe needed a much more broader, con broader engagement with the public to an extent that the creation of these offices would have been necessitated with strong justification because you know you are having somebody who is at a higher authority than a PS yeah. who is a constitutional office officer yes so then it means the creation of that is not just you do not just need to get memoranda like what the public service commission did mm. but some strong public engagement that makes people mm -hmm. to determine whether they really need yeah, this. Actually, PSC got a serious indictment in this case. Exactly. For lack well, of uh, uh, public participation, a proper one for that matter in this case. Exactly. So, so I, think, I think that comprehensive engagement it is what maybe the, the, the courts didn't find. Mm. And it is something that also remember that it came in on a short notice. Mm -hmm. So the Public Service Commission was also working on a very short notice to ensure that they help also help the president to, 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 to form his government yeah. within some time frame. So mm -hmm. they did not have luxury of time to comprehensively engage the public on the creation of this that would have even led to the establishment of certain legal frameworks mm. that would then create a legal a, a legal mechanism for establishing these positions you, you know courts have been on the spot for a very long time since last election i mean people have spoken about the supreme court and the entire judiciary mm. but what is opinion the courts stood to their test to hold the constitution to prevent and to serve kenyans you know, whichever way it goes. What do you really think this one has really shed on the independence of the judiciary? I, I think it has really worked and it has really, it's not portraying the courts as very independent because, you know, most people expected that, mm. that they're going to play to the gallery of the, pres of, of, of the executive and allowing the, the, allowing the executive to have its way. And then all of a sudden, and I think even most of the CSs did not expect this. They did not see this coming. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, the courts in, in, in their wisdom make this independent opinion that is in favor of the public. So they sort of have they sort of have played to mm. the mood of the public and that also is now helping them to build the confidence with the public that you know what we have a judiciary that we can go to to arbitrate if if we are aggrieved with any decision by the executive and even then you will even see remember you know this is how this independence is how courts get confidence of the public yeah. remember during the time of uh, you know the, the former chief justice Mutunga, uh, Maraga? Maraga, right. yes, during the time of Maraga. People could go to courts and they could get opinion that, you know, they could get judgments that they feel are for them and not necessarily for the executive. Mm. And I think this is a good move. It's a good move that then portrays the separation of powers between the different arms of government and then also helped the public to know that, you know what, we don't need to go to the streets to get what we want. We don't need to make noise to get what we want. We do not rebel to get what we want. We can actually get an arbitration from an independent office yeah. in the judiciary. Was it just something um, in the corridors waiting for the soul of um, Kenya Kwanzaa to test. Remember what Jubilee uh, government suffered mm. in 2013 during election, the nullification of the presidential election. And then the big one was the nullification of the BBI, which was also <laughs> deemed unconstitutional. Yeah. 
So the soul of Jubilee tasted that bitter pill uh, from the judiciary. Again now, was it just a moment of wait for the soul of Kenya Kwanzaa to taste the bitter pill of the judiciary as well? I think I think it is not yet. When you look at uh, when you look at the the uh, you know the the kind of um, uh, what what Jubilee as you had mentioned. Uh, hmm. yes, experience. Well, President Kenyatta suffered a big yes, blow as well you know, during the, the blow that the blow that he got yes, in the, the nullification of the, the election, election. And also that. Yeah. I think that w it's still not comparable yet with the, the, the 50 CSS. Mm. I think that the 50 CSS for me is a win-win for the government. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it, it depends on how? how someone looks at it because it can, be, it can be a way that, it can be a way that the government now says that, as, as we had said that, you know what, I really, put, I really gave these guys job, but these jobs, but the public do not want it, but now how do I negate it? Mm. Now the courts have, have, have rendered it constitutional. This is the time to play to the public good. So that is a win for the government. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, it, I think that they have not, they have not yet made that rule, ruling that really cracks into the soul mm. of, of the regime that much. Mm. Maybe a ruling on the Finance Act will be one of such. <laughs> Which is also still pending, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let, let me get you a tweet here as before we, we go to the next bit of it. Senator um, Gerard Gay tweeted immediately after uh, that court ruling, and let me just quote, <laughs> read out that tweet. That is from Senator Gerard Gay. The judiciary has gone rogue by ruling that creation of CAS positions is unconstitutional without considering merits of the case. In the financial year 2023-2024, judiciary received additional four billion shillings let me stop there for a moment before we even continue from that point the judiciary has gone rogue by ruling that the creation of cs position is unconstitutional without considering merits of the case in the financial year 2023-2024 judiciary received additionally four billion shillings above their normal budget but they um there is a constitution continuation of cases backlog corruption and ineptitude in dispensation of justice by judiciary he says we shall appeal this decision that negates public interest and principles of natural justice he finishes saying who will watch the watcher <laughs> the question is the judiciary has gone rogue that is a serious indictment to the judiciary from a position of that um, a person of that position yeah I, th I think I think that is that is a not uh, well guided statement because you see we we have to be we have to be honest in in our judgment of the judiciary if the judiciary is for us we should accept their judgment if the judiciary is against it we should be able to be honorable enough to to accept their judgments because they are looking at these judgments from we have given them the responsibility to to look at these cases and make the judge the judgments based on the wisdom as they see mm. the cases so it will be unfair to to con to to call them rogue when they when they rule against us and support them when they rule for us yeah. i think that will be double speak mm -hmm. and it will be very unfair for the courts mm. yeah. It, it doesn't matter. Given four billion shillings, that is for the, dispensers, the yeah. dispensation of justice. And it's not for the courts. It's for the common manainchi. Courts need money yes. to run the affairs. Yes. I mean, we have got backlog of cases going back way. Like today I was reading a story here going back 1982. Yeah. A case still pending in court. Mm. Uh, the likes of Senior Council or Rauru is holding that, call, that case right now. When you have courts given their money to run the affairs for the sake of common manainchi. And uh, should, should somebody said, if it doesn't work to your favor, as you put it. Yes. Yeah. And I, 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 think, I think it is also important for us to know that we give institutions money to execute their mandate. Yes. And to execute them as per the constitution without fear or favor. Mm -hmm. And uh, so help me God. I think that's what they say, right? Mm. So with, with that kind of thinking, 
then it is it is it is it is a responsibility of of the different arms of government to facilitate other arms of government because of that interdependency so if if the 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 treasury gives 4 billion to the judiciary mm -hmm. they are giving them to execute their mandate which their is judicial also mandate. in the last regime exactly yes and it is not well, meant President Kenyatta said that we shall revisit it and it, <laughs> yes and it it's a serious <laughs> <laughs> it's not meant for them so the 4 yeah. billion that they were given is for them to execute their mandate not for them to rule in favor mm. of government so i think we need to be clear on that okay should the kenya kwanza administration um in black and white be wary of the court processes and let executive be independent judiciary be independent and even the legislature be independent that is the spirit of the constitution 2010 yes separation of powers and independent of government organs mm. so that every organ can oversee the other that is the whole question of independence of uh, independence of, of of different arms of of, of government mm. that you know what as a judiciary i can be able to make a decision without being indicted by any other organ of government and i do it constitutionally as per the provisions of the law yes the same thing with the executive the same thing with the parliament mm. and then in the long run you end up having all these organs overseeing each other and ensuring that every one of them follows the law and rules the country according to the spirit of the constitution mm. if we do not go if we do not go with that then we are going back to where we came from where one person could decide what the judiciary says one person could de decide what law is made in parliament one person could decide what policies are approved in the cabinet yeah. then in that case there will not have been need we will be having a monarch and not a democracy so i think that we need to um we need to adhere to the spirit of ind independence of mm -hmm. government uh, organs and see the facilitation of these government organs not as a way to blackmail them to act in our favor but as a way to make them to facilitate them to to facilitate them to execute their mandate mm. as provided for in the constitution all right Chachi, let's take a break when we come back um we'll get to the final bit of this discussion an interesting bit but uh, i'll also ask a question which was uh, a tweet which was also put by frederick okango you know frederick okango yeah. frederick okango is the secretary of political affairs kanu and azimio one kenya spokesperson um he says that rutu knew very well that uh, the cas position was unconstitutional following previous high court decision but went ahead to recreate it to consolidate power and buy enough time to form his government the 51 nominees cannot blame him for not rewarding them he will tell them that it's the courts not him that's the same question i asked you we'll respond to that when we come back and by the way there are supposed to be two guests here tabitha gutu is a no show yes that is her seat we'll show you the seat is still there tabitha not a good way to do it. Let's take a break. We'll be right back after this.